Good day and welcome back to the Pillars of Ranternity. It's time to go to the lower level of the sanitarium and start talking to animancers. See if we can get that tome for um, the guy rotten in the catacombs. And just in general, uh, get, get a few more bits and pieces done. So here we go. We're out here. And I think here is the first person we want to talk to, Bellasage. They are an expert on awakenings. Hello. A woman paces back and forth, her feet crunching on soft red carpet. She gestures and mumbles to herself, shaking her head as she pours over pages of notes. She almost walks into you. A cursey, here I am, looking so hard for answers in my research that I don't see the kids standing in front of me. What can I do for you? I'm looking. Well, actually, let's start with, have you noticed anything unusual or suspicious here lately? It's rare for me to notice anything that doesn't belong to my work, even when they are in front of me. Sienta Amica. But I am not the best choice to help you with that. Something you need? Uh, I'd like to know more about Animancy and the Valian Republics. What? I pressed four. That, what? No, no. Oh, it's three that I was after. It's a dynamic and respected field. Even the Bail Reach incident did little to slow it. People in the republics are more accepting of risk, less superstitious, ready to try anything that shows promise. Um, so, it's a shame so many here are hostile towards animancy. It is, but that's the way it would. The people here are fierce about their sovereignty, and they're not so independent from their Adair and brothers and their Glanfathen neighbors that they would like to think. They rely too much on the mysterious workings of the gods and fear the very advances they need. What do you do here? According to my research, Grant, I sub study awakening. Sublimating, uh, sublimating pre-awakened souls has been one of Animacy's greatest successes. I'm working on a method to replicate the process on awakened souls. She knows her lips. The truth is, I find few suitable subjects. Waden's legacy has left plenty of awakened souls, but most are too broken for study. I fear I'll return to Revo with nothing to show for my efforts. Um... So, I'm looking for an expert. Ah, oh, that'll be me. The, the lack of research subjects, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to transfer Animancy's success in buttressing pre-awakened souls to soothing those souls who've already awakened. But I need subjects, and most of the patients here are too broken to produce reliable results. It's a tragedy to have come so far for nothing. You're in luck. I have a volunteer. Galad, who is it? I don't know about this. Don't be silly. The process is perfectly harmless. All you have to do is stand in that cage. I beg your pardon? I jest. Your adherence is so tight. I don't know what the thing is used for. Belong the last occupant of this office, I think. Now they upgrade him to a cell. Again, I jest. So I need you to sit here and try to relax. But don't try too hard. And you will not be relaxing. Indeed. His eyes are humorless. And you must also wear these. A little cold, but the copper will help conduct your essence. The Animancer fastens thick copper bands to Ella's forehead and wrists. As she rushes them tighter, his face twitches with suppressed irritation. Now, I'll examine your soul through my scope. She reaches into her desk and produces a long chambered tube. Knobs, dials, and small toothed wheels run along the side of the device. It's fitted with adra lenses to cut different thicknesses and concavities. By manipulating them, I find the angles and densities that will allow me to track anomalies in your soul. How exciting! I've never seen this sort of thing performed! Kana peers at the device with interest. It seems suitably complicated. Does this mean we get to talk to Isselmo more? I like that lady. Bellasage raises a finger. But first, we must find this cunning interloper. You'll have to answer some personal questions while I make adjustments. Don't worry. I'm sure you we won't hear any of it. Very well. To begin, tell me something personal. From a time before your awakening. There's nothing to tell. I was just a normal child living in the Sithwood. He looks to you. His face is set in a frown, but the rigid edges of apprehension show through nonetheless. What do you remember about your home? As you speak to Aleth, you feel your voice like a bell in your chest. It tells softly, luring him into the mists of his own memory. Bellasage doesn't seem to notice anything, but you feel as if your words are soothing his, smoothing his essence, untangling its many threads. He closes his eyes. Comfortable. Modest. Quiet when mother is away, which most, is most of the time. Quiet enough to hear the clink of glass on wood. That's when I know to be most careful. 
Father is good at hiding the bottles. Mother, when she's home, is good at pretending not to notice them. This is good. I'm starting to see something. Continue. Tell us about the time you awakened. She bites her tongue as she twists one of the dials. I'm in my fifth year of training. Mother is home. I can let my guard down a little because when she's around, he's usually only angry with her. But he's heard I have trouble casting missiles. And my flame shields are unstable. He's furious that I've failed. And Mother's presence reminds him that he has failed too. The first blow takes me by surprise. One moment I'm sweeping the kitchen. The next I'm sprawled on the ground looking st stupidly at the flecks of blood on of my blood on the tile. His boots, glistening with flesh, polish thud across the floor. He kicks me in the stomach, and I curl up to shield my vitals. But it's pointless. Protecting one thing only leaves something else exposed. Still huddles on the ground, I retreat as fast as I can. I retreat onto the vision of the kitchen. My own trembling knees is nothing but a pinprick against a field of black. His jaw locks and his eyes twitch beneath their lids. Mariko! He's hypnotizing himself with this old memory. You gotta bring him out of it quick. I almost have it. Um, let's squeeze his hand. You're safe. Everything's okay. Alice's eyes snap open, but the expression you see in them isn't his. He's never safe when I hop upon him. Bella Sage sucks a deep breath in through her teeth. That's it. I'm seeing a shift in his ass. Something spreading and congealing. She glances over at her scope. Keep talking. He seems to respond to you. What brought you here? Cracking bones and voices in high ire. That warm molasses feeling that crips down your cut when the crisis is nigh. Belthetta, we have flares of totally distinct essence. She jots down notes and onto the pages next to her and turns one clicking over the scope. Now try to get the two of them talking. Isselmir, tell Aleth why you've awakened. Fie, he's the one that needed me, hiding in his own bone bag like a turtle in a shell. Alice's face twists in fury. I never turned it over to you. Good, good, very good. She rests uh, from her scribbling only to make another adjustment to her scope. I can now see two separate patterns of essence. Where he ebbs, the other flows. It's as if a wicked soul filled the spaces he leaves empty. She goes, she prompts at you with a tr circling of her wrist, quill still in hand. Go on. Isselmir, what exactly are you taking from him? Aleph, what's this about seeding space to Isselmir? I've given her nothing. She usurps me in my own body. I, I lend, and I lend him a pair too. You should ask what I did to that old man of his. How the last time he laid a hand on us, I break it in three places. Alice had jerked to the side. That wasn't your decision. It's never been your decision. Nai was awakening, but now I'm stuck with you, and damned if I let you kneeing drag us both through the scupper. Ach, very good. She lowers a scope and consults her notes. I think I finally got something we can work with. A tracked Islamist throughout the uh, essence throughout the exchange has got a particularly high density index during the most heated portions of their arguments, and her essence seems to be locally localized most clearly in the lower portion of the subject's left rib cage. It's right around the spleen, of course. That means she's triggered by black bile. No doubt the subject's characteristic melancholy is to blame. Aleph blinks back at you in the midst of his perturbation. You're not sure who's looking out of his eyes. That's utter horseshit. Sagani's eyes are wide and innocent. It does seem <laughs> she's got one thing, right? Yes, never mind my years of training. I suppose you've got a better explanation. Um... I think you're close. I think Isselmir's appearances are related to potential sources of trouble for Elath. I suppose that could be true. I'll have to check this against other research. Well and good for you, but what does this mean for me? Um, let's go with... Um, Oh, sorry, Bella says she frowns at her, her notes, tapping her cheek with a quill and making grand show of concentration. However, you catch her stealing glances at you over the pages. This will may take, tries to take control of you when she thinks you can't face a problem on your own. You can't let her make these decisions for you. Um, or let's do this. She did you a favor by dealing with your father, didn't she? I think she's trying to help you stand up for yourself. You may not like her methods, but you should hear her out. If you had to listen to her half as much as I do, you wouldn't say that. He scowls, but you notice something thoughtful in his frown. I've got a lot to process. Regardless, 
Thank you for your help, Renica. He does not look at Velisage. Velisage sets her notes on her desk and returns to school. Well, I hope this has been useful to you as it has been to me. Finally, I have enough material worth pu publishing. You'll be the toast of rebel, Fentry Eloth. Hey, th almost 3k experience. His grimace melts away into a crooked smile. I advancing the right ways principles of animancy, just what you've always wanted. As you turn to leave, you catch a darting ribbon out of the corner of your eye. Velisage is humming to herself, but Eloth is holding her notes. He's just about to tuck them into his cloak when he catches you watching. He holds his finger to his lips, his eyes widen and blowing. Please, I don't want this my personal information published like this, especially not after her nonsense. Look. You get your explanation, she gets her research. That was the deal. Stick to the deal. He slides the papers back on the desk, giving you a rough look. And now you're gonna help you explain this one, scholar boy. Yep. Cool. Alice quest completed. I wonder if Alice yeah, gets yeah. anything from it, or if th that will then come with other things later. Uh, Paper Lycus and Gilded Veil. Um, anything interesting pop up here? Not really. Um, that's his gear effects. Yeah, no, nothing. Just say the word. And this would be murdered. Let's uh, leave the trunk alone. Probably want to talk to Modred first. Take his stuff, take his stuff. Actually, press F5. Um, talk to him. An anamancer scribbles feverishly on a parchment scroll while his free hand dances through the air, counting off unseen objects. His lips move in silent discourse. As your shadow falls over a scroll, he looks up at you with mingled perplexity and irritation. Hello. Can I help you? Um, does the name Helig mean anything to you? Helig? He was, is, a colleague of mine, I mean. He, he was primarily a necromancer, but he was involved in animancy too. He worked at the sanitarium for several years. I dare say everyone here has heard of him. He clears his throat. He left his post recently. I believe he was seeking new opportunities in the Valian Republics. The advances they're making in animancy are really quite remarkable. Surely you've heard. Perhaps you haven't. Do you know a woman named Rowena? No, I don't get out of the sanitarium much. What are you working on? My focus is the area of wicks. More specifically, how to cure them. Why do you study wicks? What kind of questions is that? Think of all the families it could be, all of the lives it could be restored. What's more important? His face reddens and turns away from you. Animancy has an answer here. I know it. It's simply a matter of working it out. I see. Um, anything unusual been happening here? You must be joking. This is a sanitarium. Nothing is usual down here. Although, now I think about it, the patients seem more agitated than normal. They're Cade Menezel's responsibility, not mine. Then if there's nothing else, just looking around. Well, just be quick about it. Um, so. Man who waits, yep, sure. Undying heritage. Through death's gate, nope. So then, the, we've got the theorems. Voice from the past, this one. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to save. Stealing trunks. And then we're going to sneak in. Uh, all sneaky-like. And see if we can uh, get the stuff that way. Examine the trunk more closely. Let's go large padlock. Unlock the trunk. Lost an item, Modric's key. Trunk holds no grimoires or treasures. Instead, you find yourself staring into the feral gaze and twisted, twisted more of a, uh, a monstrous creature. Its humanoid form has been overwhelmed by bony angles and terrible claws. With a start, you, exam you recognize the vague shape of a young girl beneath the malformed bones, and murder dies. And a wick pops out. Well... That seems less than helpful. 
So we were basically set up to just get him murdered. <sighs> I should have remembered that. I'm pretty sure I did the same thing in my game. In my previous run. Um, that's just kind of sad. I'll have this open in no time. That'll do it. Oh hey, look. Patient notes. Pale ladies, female, subject, mid-40s, um, awakened to a past life as a serial murderer. That seems pretty bad. Yeah, definitely. Um, Graham, male, early 30s, silent, over-fragmented, uh, ideal subject, severe pain, induced panic. Yep, sure. Um, the Midnight Man, male, mid twenties, acute dissociation and paranoia, delusional tendencies, causing anger with extreme violence, dangers of working with the subject preclude possibility of further research. And lastly, Uskram, male, approximately seventeen, catatonia and violent outbursts, severe fragmentation and essence deficiencies. Said deficiency basically makes them useless for research. Okay. Talk to Ethelmere about Azal. Okay, let's go back and talk to Ethelmere. That seems like not a bad idea. It's certainly getting a lot of questing done. Actually, I should check how much XP we need to level again. Because, I mean, we seem to be getting it reasonably quickly right now, but on the other hand, yeah, we still need another K or so. So, like, two more quest tantins, I think. Ethelmere. How do you do? I found records that Ezra may be running some questionable experiments. Experiments? Cademan Azo is in charge of patient welfare now. He's not authorized to run any more experiments. I am disappointed in Caden. I had hoped he would be the one to guide your inquiry. He'll be in his office or in the patient wards. I'm granting you immediate access so you can find him. No doubt you will wish to speak to him further on this matter. And I, for one, am curious as to what he might have to say. Tread carefully in the wards. There are a few dangerous cases. I will also ask that you do your best not to agitate the patients. They have enough troubles as it is. Um, Odma. Greetings. Um, nope. Don't have that. Okay. Just was checking other things, but okay. We've got access to the wards, which the guards probably would have previously said, nah, no, no, don't, don't do that. Don't try. But I mean, why was he keeping a wick in a box? That's just dumb, man. No wonder you're dead. You're keeping a freaking zombie child in, in a box. That's just stupid. Everyone says she can go in. Let's see what lies this way. Is this just an empty room full of torture chamber imp implements? Because seriously, that's not cool. But uh, I guess we'll see what we can get done. Ripley, believe it or not. Notes from Azo require more copper tubing to not get it from the sanitarium stores. Yeah. Well, that's not suspicious. Good day, stranger. A young Olin woman traces her fingers across the spine of the books in front of her row by row. Her motions quick and skittish, like a bird's. She doesn't notice you until you're nearly upon her. How am I? You startle me. Are you supposed to be in here? What are you doing here? I mostly help Master Azo set up and clean his experiments. I also keep his office organized since he's too busy to do it himself. If there's nothing else, I need to get back to work. Oh well. Alright, that's it. Cool, cool. We'll just save here. Flesh constructs, patience. Someone named Frail. A curved spine twists as a woman's posture forwards. Her greasy hair draped over her large eyes like vines. She smiles at you. You must be visiting someone. Then noting her appearance, she adds, A friendly visit, I hope. Uh, so... Do you know where I'm... Have any of the patients been acting unusually? Well, there's Batik, sir, who usually relives a murder she committed more than five lifetimes a month. Um, there you go. 
Edelman, who they say only has half a soul and who was found collecting the faces of others because he believed his own to be a false one. And Graham, who speaks in a language no one understands and wails at night sometimes. Different from their normal behaviour, I mean. Well, yes, I suppose. Nothing they didn't volunteer for. Master Ezra let us know that a number of patients in the North Ward had volunteered for a new therapy and will be escorted to his laboratory to receive treatment. The North Ward has most of our troubled cases. I'm glad some of them have chosen to get help. It seems to me it's gotten quieter over there since it started. Um, it's Graham I see taking them the most. It taking in the most. He struggles, but it always was a bit of a wild one. What do you know about him? Oh, I like him very much. Uh, many animators could care less about their patients. They look at us like vermin for their experiments. But Master Azor treats us like humans, even the very sick. You can tell he does this to help people. He's helped me understand a great deal about myself, and I know he's done the same for others too. Too bad what they did to him. He hides it well, but he's still affected by it. What happened to him? They don't like to talk about it, but there was an accident. He was said to be one of the brightest in Deerwood. That was his reputation here, and that was what brought me to seek treatment. People say it was ego that drove him to try, solve the legacy, but that's hogwash, even if he was a bit of a showman. He loves his homeland. He thought he could help. Uh, he wasn't one to speak of his works. I suspected that his colleagues might have tried to steal it, but he once told me that he had figured out a way to create a soul. Not a soul exactly, mind you. How did he approach it? A proxy. He had a machine that drew energy out of the very ether. Can you imagine? The point is, it was going to help with the legacy. It's going to help make the Hollowborn into something easy to love and care for. Gods, no. That's something we need. Do you know what they call those empty little babies in Andra's gift? Um, if you could just finish what, this, what you're saying. No, tell me. They call them buoys because there's so many of them found floating face down in the water. These are mad times. Anyway, Master Azo had scheduled a public demonstration of his work in Copper Lane. He was so excited. Then the next day, he was locked in his office, turned away visitors, I heard. He stopped seeing patients. I don't know exactly what happened, but I don't have the heart to ask him. I'm glad they let him treat people again. Why are you in here? I don't want to say. You'll, you'll see less of me. I'm listening. The last few years haven't been kind to me. They haven't been kind to anyone, really. I try not to think of it as personal. I lost both my, my husband and both boys in the Saints War. My daughter, the legacy took her before she was ever mine. I may do. What else can you do? I moved into a tiny place in Andre's gift. Got by by mending clothes and kindness to strangers when I had to. But I was surviving and the gods were watching over me. I could take care of that. Then one day, this noble woman comes in. She wants this fancy ga gown fixed. Gorgeous things. Shade of blue I'd never seen before. Only I had. I looked at it and reminded me of something. I had what they call an awakening. I remembered being a noble woman myself in another life. People doting over me. Men doting over me. The best food, the most beautiful home, all the things you ever never dared to dream of. They were mine. It was poison knowing that. All those things I'd had that I'd never have in this life. It did something to me. My food started to taste rotten. The walls in my little room seemed to close in around me. I stopped being able to sleep in my own bed. So I came here. I was out of break into an estate and start ordering servants around. Seems like a little, silly little thing to worry about. You don't have to tell me, but I can't get past it. I start to wonder, did the gods choose this life for me? And if so, what terrible thing must I have done to, uh, to deserve it? Maybe you'll get there again one day. If not in this life, but then in another. Or no one deserves to go what you've been through. I hope not. I can't even imagine the monster who deserves what half the patients here go through every day. Alright, farewell. That was interesting, and I liked that aspect. It's like, yeah, so you did really well in a previous life, and now, not so much. How do you deal with that? Keeping an eye out. How do you deal no with knowing... Yeah, that's fine, I got 30 lockpicks. That'll do it. How do you deal with knowing that... Ooh, look at that. Um, unique one-handed mace. 16 to 23 crushing damage, plus 4 accuracy when attacking the same ally as a target. Um, yep. Um, legend tells of a druid wise and powerful who traveled accompanied by a flock of ravens. In battle, the druid would assail his enemies with his mace while the ravens descended in a chaotic swarm, distracting and flanking his foes. Years of coordinated attacks and the druid's lingering magics are said to have gifted his mace with an enchantment that wield, lends a wield of similar gifts. 
The mace is finely wrought and lightweight, making it maneuverable, if not very resistant, against direct attacks. Against a distracted opponent, however, a single blow often proves quite sufficient. That is a very nice little piece there. So we'll give it to me because it can totally replace one of these two, I think. This is one-handed. I mean, it also would work very well on him. In fact, it would almost certainly work better on him. Uh, 18 to 26, yeah. Put that away. Um, what I should do with me here is three of those and two of these and maybe share some of that potion love around. Couple of potions here, couple of potions there. Got to remember that they exist, but I'm sure I will eventually. And that fine robe is not better than that. That's right. That was a reason for that. I'll have this open in no time. And this will cost six. Oh, sorry, just one. That's fine. I'll have this open in no time. And that is. Blood Colon Wolf's Heart is said to have been placed, uh, blessed by Lord of the Hunt himself, a human hunter showing skill with a bow and arrow beyond any ever seen. Uh, caught Galloway's attention one day. Galloway proposed a bargain. If the hunter could best him in a hunting contest, Galloway would present her with armor that would bestow upon her the power of a wolf. For a week, both hunters tracked their respective quarry through the woods, and when the contest was ended, the hunter felled the most game. True to his word, Galloway presented her with the wolf heart, which gave her the crafty and evasive nature of its namesake. So it makes it harder to stun you, to knock you down, and increases your defenses when it happens. And it's a very nice light armor, and I think I will take it. Don't really know what it has about some of the other bits, but hey, also, I can put on my actual hat now, and yeah, that'll totally replace this. Oh yeah, look at that. Better than the light armor that I just dumped in my stash, right? Um, here, it was one of these. Yeah, padded armor, right? It's got slightly lower recovery speed. Just say the word. Oh, here's Azo. Uh, let's have a chat, Mr. Azo. A round-faced balding man turns to face you. His upper lip is pulled up slightly by his pointed nose, exposing his upper teeth when he scowls. What is the meaning of this? Ethelmere told me you're not supposed to be doing any more experiments. Yes, well, Ethelmere hasn't told that much good for anyone since he had his soul moved to an inanimate object. So I fail to see why I should let that sway me. If animancers all followed the commands of their leaders, where would we be? We'd all be as backwards and willfully ignorant as Redgarus. And we would know nothing about life or death, or even ourselves. We would be lost in the dark with no clue as to why. Our leaders guide us. Without them, we risk losing our way. If this man would strike off on his own, then let him fend for himself without the benefit of the sanitarium. We toy with things beyond our comprehension. It's dangerous and foolish. Um, it seems to me we're still in the dark. Do, 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 do. What do we want to say here? What do I want to say here? Surely there are other paths that don't involve risking Indeed. lives. Many lives have been spent in such pursuits, writing treatises and poems. But tell me this, how does one verify the truth of a poem? If some philosopher stumbled across the meaning of our existence, how would we know it from a false one? These are wasted lives. In animancy there is progress. We are measurably closer to complete understanding because of our work. And that will be true until our work is complete. Who will solve Widewen's legacy? Some church? Some warrior? It will be an animancer or it will be no one at all. I heard you were demoted. How did it happen? As those nostrils flare and he bears his upper teeth more proudly. That's none of your concern. Did any one of the others put you up to this? Odma, that smug weasel. Things went wrong. Everything. I don't know how. I'll never know. He spits on the floor as if to remove a bit of bile taste from his mouth. Have you tried your experiments on any other subjects? I have, yes. No point in lying about it now, now that Ethelmiel's involved. 
I asked for volunteers from our patients, and a few brave souls came forward. I was very close at one time to a breakthrough. They understood that. They understood their sacrifices would mean something. I'd like access to the North Ward. Out of the question. Those patients are in isolation for a reason. Your fart seems awfully damp for some all of a sudden. Perhaps I should discuss your insubordination with the head one. Uh, or maybe you'll just do this. Uh, I've seen your records. I know what you're doing with Those them. Those are private. You have no right. He balls up his fist and digs his teeth into his index finger. A growl simmering beneath his breath and a deep scowl compressing Fine. his face. Speak to them for all the good it'll do you. I'm sure the discussions will be fascinating. All right. Thank you. That's what I wanted. I'm on it. Okay, so these would be the empty cells. These are patients. So there's um, a bunch of flesh constructs. By the way, would you hazard a guess as to whether or not we will be coming back through here? And having to deal with these flesh golems as enemies. Because I'm pretty sure that I had to do that previously. And then there's also this. I'll take a look. Knowing I'm undetected when I steal is always nice. Um, yep, nope, that's all good. So through here are wicks, as I recall. Keep your distance, wicks in that cell back there. Yeah, okay. So. I'm just going to save. In fact, we're going to move on to the next episode. Next time we will explore the North Ward. Until then, have a great day and good night.